Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. It is uh, Thursday, October 28th, and we have Connor from this old farm. We have his Super M in the shop, and basically Connor is at his wit's end with this thing. <clears throat> and he dropped it off earlier this week, and we, uh, we did some preliminary checking on it and I'll kind of run through a couple of the things that we did and what we found and it sounds like we're gonna have to get quite a bit further into this thing than we originally planned or anticipated but nonetheless we will get this thing going at some point so let's go ahead and dive on in So the first thing we wanted to check was valve clearance. Now on these engines, specifications list that a hot engine should be checked for a valve clearance of 17 thousandths. When these are cold, I usually set them to about 19 thousandths to allow for a little bit of expansion of the steel. So that's what we did. Um, we checked the engine cold, we set all the valves to 19 thousandths. Most of them were pretty close uh, there were a few that were loose and a couple that were tight so that's the first thing that we did the second thing that we did was we checked the compression on all the cylinders now Connor and his dad had done this prior and they had written on the tank right here what each cylinder was from rear to front or front to rear this was prior to the head being pulled and reconditioned and after the head being pulled and reconditioned. And I can't read the, the after number on cylinder number four, but either way, before they had the head reconditioned, the PSI in each cylinder was between 45 and 55 pounds, which is extremely, extremely low. These, these engines tired would be considered 90 pounds. You know, really tired would be 90 pounds. Ideally, they should be well over 100, 110, 120 per cylinder. Now, after the head was done, it looks like the range was between 55 and 65 pounds, which doesn't give you much increase in compression, and it is definitely way lower than it should be. Now, when we tested it here at the shop, when he got it here, my tests were right around 50 to they topped out right around 50 pounds you know most of them were between 45 and 50 52 somewhere in there so we've got really low compression in the cylinders which tells me you know one of two things or three things one we've got a valve issue or possibly a crack in the block or the head two we've got worn piston rings or um yeah, that's really all I can think of on that one. Or three, we've got a blown head gasket, but I am thinking with these numbers being pretty close across the board that it is most likely piston rings and cylinder sleeve wear. Because in order for these numbers to be all the same and have a blown head gasket, that's extremely unlikely. Usually you'll have one or maybe two cylinders if it's blown out between the two cylinders. Um, valve issue also unlikely we checked the clearance and it's it'd be unlikely if we had a burnt valve or a, a valve that was stuck or a bent valve that all the all the cylinders would be within the same compression range and I know that these figures are accurate because we've tested it with two different gauges so there's got to be an internal problem within the engine as far as compression goes second the 
live hydraulic pump where the distributor bolts on so the distributor drive out of the live hydraulic pump has about a quarter to three-eighths of an inch of play from side to side or rotational play that is not good that tells me there's either a problem with the gear that's driven off the camshaft or the key that the gear is pressed onto or the shaft and key that it's pressed onto may have sheared the key or the key may be worn severely or the gear may be worn severely or we're missing teeth somewhere I really don't know so regardless we're gonna have to pull the head which means we got to drain the coolant we got to drain the oil because we got to take the pistons out to look at the rings second if we want to take the timing cover off to look at not only the pump gear I mean we can pull the pump off but we have to look at the cam gear and the crank gear to make sure that those are jiving and everything is kosher there so in order to do that we have to pull the radiator and the front bolster and the wide front end so we've got quite a bit of work cut out for us my goal today is you know I'm doing this after work and after Rudy's my goal today is to get the steering shaft out to get you know the alternator we'll try to get that off get the head off in order to get the head off we're gonna have to take the manifold off the carburetor off um, you know your radiator support rod let's see possibly well I don't think we'll have to take off the the steering support here but we will have to take this vent tube out of the air cleaner that goes to the back of the cylinder head and we'll also, we'll also have to take this tube off that delivers oil I think to the governor I think that's the purpose of this it's not a vent it's got to be to deliver oil I want to say it might be a vent but anyways we've got we've got quite a bit of work cut off for us after we get the head off depending on what time it is we may try to we may try to drop the pan which we should be able to do without removing the front end so yeah we've got a lot of work cut out for us and I sure wish I had a forklift or forks for the bucket on the M to move the wide front out but I don't so we're gonna have to figure that out I'll probably use the engine hoist or something like that but that's where we're at so let's get started okay we've got everything we need to get off off the tractor and we're gonna go ahead and lift the head up and go from there a lot of crap in the coolant jackets so I'm assuming that's some of the stop leak if they put stop leak in it that is I think he said he did but Just by feel, cylinders two and three have a pretty good, not terrible, but it's a it's a decent ridge at the top, mainly on the carburetor side, not so much on the not so much on the other side, the distributor side. But there's no cross hatching in the cylinders, so they definitely glazed. Let's get this cylinder head out of the way. Well, 
just doing a preliminary check all of the cylinders have a a pretty decent ridge it's not terrible it's not the worst I've seen I don't know if you can hear that that's my fingernail catching on the ridge so the pistons definitely have to come out so I'm gonna drain the oil it's 8 o'clock at night already I'm gonna drain the oil and uh, let it drain overnight and go from there but we still have to get the whole front end apart and with this wide front this is a factory international wide front I think it's got the tie rods out front which tells me it's factory IH but with this wide front you can't drain the radiator you have to remove the entire wide front end to drain the radiator because the plates on the bottom side cover up all the drains so yeah and I'm not even sure how this thing goes together I'm sure there's nuts inside here that I probably won't be able to get to because they're covered in grease and dirt and everything else so yeah we'll drain the oil overnight and uh, I'm going to clean up my tools. I don't like leaving tools lay out. It drives me absolutely nuts. So that's kind of where we're headed. Um, pistons got to come out in order to do that. Blech. In order to do that, the oil pan's got to come off and we'll go from there. That's all I can say right now. But it doesn't look, uh, doesn't look great. I don't know if these will hone out or not. I really don't. Number three isn't as bad as number two, but one and four, they're, they have about the same wear, you know, roughly, but we'll drain the oil, I'm cleaning up, and I'm going to bed because i got to be up in less than eight hours, so see you guys in the next one.